Oke, okay, main ya. Hello. Uh, good evening. Kinifo is Stefan Stefan Izoro. Hi Richard, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for asking. I hope you guys are okay amidst this uh COVID-19 happening around our place. So we will be starting at 7:30. So we still have about 20 27 minutes to be exact. Uh to wait for the others. Okay? So we are going to start 7.30. And I already prepared the exercise files that we will be using for this exercise. It's about managing views. This is part of setting up your project. So we are going to learn uh, like uh, view templates, uh, basic filters, Okay, for that one.
Hello Raj. I'm just uh, waiting for 7.30 so at the moment I'm just browsing. Okay, I'm browsing my social media. Hello Stan. How are you guys? Hopefully you're you're doing fine in your place. So don't get outside if it is not essential. Okay, so we start 7.30 so we still have uh, six minutes more. Okay, four minutes more. So hopefully you can hear me clearly and you can see my screen. Just chat if you can't hear me or you can't see the screen.
Alright, so please download the exercise files here. Okay? So later on, I'm going to delete this uh, folder. So this is this will gonna be only available for those who will be attending the training today or tonight. So please download the exercise files in this folder, and then I want you to open the file. Uh huh. Okay, so I want you to open the file uh, managing views. Okay. So we will be opening the exercise file managing views, right? Alright, so I want you to download the exercise files in this link that I have sent on our live chat. So I want you to download the two, uh, two files there, Managing Views, and then the other one is Feasibility File Exercise. So I want you to open the Managing Files, okay? Or Managing Views. But if you do not want to go along as I explain it, that's alright. Okay, so just download the exercise so that later on you can you can follow the exercise, okay? At your uh, leisure time. Okay, so the version that, as you can see, the version that I'm opening right now is 2020, uh, 2010. So it's being converted to uh, 2021. So once I save these files, or this file, it will going to be 2021. So remember, you cannot uh, downgrade the Revit file to a lower version, okay? So if it is... Uh, 2021 so you can't open that to lower version but you can always open a lower version to a higher version of Revit Alright, so are you guys able to open the, the folder that I have sent? Or I mean the link that I have sent on our live chat? So please let me know if you are able to download the files from that one because that is the exercise file that we are going to use for this lesson about managing views. All right, that's good. Thanks, Stan. All right, so I want you to open the uh, Managing Views file. Okay, so as you can see, my laptop is very slow. So up to this moment, it's still upgrading the file. Okay, 
but in your case if you do not want to follow the exercise you just want to listen you just uh, want to watch that's perfectly fine okay so just download the exercise file so that later on you will be able to follow the exercise that we will be doing uh, in tonight's lesson okay yeah my laptop is very slow <laughs> okay so let's just wait for that Okay, so it's still opening. Whew. Okay, so if you see this um, uh, warning, so just ignore this one, all right? So just select OK. Okay, so just select OK if you see this warning. Still opening. All right. So there is our file. Now in this um, topic, I'm going to show you how to uh, manage your views. Like for example, you want to create uh, duplicate views. I'm going to show you how to use the filter. If we still have time, we're going to discuss the how to create a view template. All right, so to get started, so in my current view, what I'm going to do is from the project browser, I'm just going to uh, change my view or open up my view level 2 HVAC plan. All right, so let's open up this one. Just double click your level 2 HVAC plan.
Okay, so our topic is about uh, managing our views. By the way, what is a view? So a view provides a unique feature of a building model. So of course, you use views to display building model from different directions and references. Okay, so you also create a variety of views such as, let's say for example, here on my uh, project browser, so you create a variety of views such as floor plan, uh what's this section view you also have 3d views you also have ceiling plan elevation for the building model okay so you can also display a plan view as an underlay in another plan which is what we are going to do as we move on on our topic about uh linking the files in our Revit project okay so you display a plan view as an underlay in another plan view uh, to highlight the relationship between the components on different levels. Okay, so when you start a project, uh, certain views are created by default. Okay, so it depends on the template that we will, uh, that you will be using in your project. So like what I've said, I think last time, if you are going to use systems template, uh, it will already create the basic views for uh, mechanical plan, um, electrical plan, and plumbing plan. Okay, so you can edit the properties of uh, these views. Okay, you can edit the properties such as the scale, you can change the detail level, okay, you can change the, the sizes, or I mean the, the detail level, you can change the visual style okay you can even crop your view okay so to those who are just started to use Revit so there's this key feature that we have in Revit which is what they call bi-directional associativity okay so bi-directional associativity ensures that the changes made in one view are automatically reflected in all the associated views so it is applied to every component view and annotation of the building model so for example if you are going to change or edit an air terminal in the plan view it will going to be reflected in other associated views such as the elevation uh, 3d views or even the schedule okay so that's how powerful this key feature of Revit, which is uh, bi-directional associativity. So any changes that you made uh, in one view, it will going to be reflected in other views. Okay, so now what we are going to do is, or what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you different options of duplicating your views. Okay, so duplicating your views. So that is what I'm going to show you first. So what are these um, different options in uh, duplicating your views? Okay, so the first option to duplicate your view is, okay, what you can do is, uh, let's say this is my level 2 HVAC plan. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this one. So to duplicate this, uh, you just need to right-click the view. Alright, okay? just right-click the view and then you will see here an option, duplicate view. All right. So with duplicate views, you can use different settings for view that displays the same portion of the building model. So we have these three options, duplicate. So when you say duplicate, which is uh, this one, so it creates a view that is a copy of the primary view. So in our case, the primary view is level 2 HVAC plan. Okay. So if it is duplicate only, duplicate view, it displays model elements, but it will not display annotation elements from the original view. So if the original view contains dimensions, tags, if you select the duplicate option, it will not show the annotations there. It will not show the dimensions, the tags, or any other annotation. Okay, it will only duplicate the model elements. When I say model elements, these are the 3D elements. Okay, in your project. 
okay so let's see what will happen so let me just zoom in first in this portion here okay so as you can see here my air terminals already got uh, tags right so let's see what will happen if I'm going to use duplicate just to verify what I just said earlier so I'm going to right click the duplicate here uh, the right click the view select the duplicate option so let's click that one and there you go okay so as you can see my level 2 HVAC plan copy one there is no tag here okay because like what I've said if it is duplicate it will not include any annotation so let's rename this one so I'm gonna right click this rename this so let's say I'm gonna call this level 2 HVAC plan duplicate okay so duplicate enter right so is that clear are you guys able to follow it's very simple right you just need to right click the view select the duplicate option and that's it okay now let's move on to the next uh to the next option if you have question regarding what i'm talking about right now you can put it on our live chat right all right mm, okay so let's go to the next option so I'm going to right click again our main view go to the duplicate and then we have here duplicate with detailing so based on the on the name of the option it's pretty obvious so aside from uh, duplicating the model elements it will also duplicate the annotation okay so if your main view got uh, tags dimensions any other annotations it will going to be duplicated as well okay so let's select this one duplicate hmm there you go so I'm going to right click this and then I'm going to select rename let's change this so I'm going to change this view to uh, with detailing okay so we detailing enter so it's pretty obvious so as you can see it also includes the detailing of our uh, main drawing so our main drawing is this one the level 2 HBAC plan which contains the tags now when we use the with detailing here it also duplicate the details right so that's how it works now we have the third option to duplicate our view which is duplicate as a dependent okay so what does this means so when you use duplicate as a dependent it creates a view that inherits the view properties and view specific elements from the primary view okay so this is our primary view right our level 2 HVAC plan in a dependent view you show only a specific area of the view so you can insert match lines to indicate where the view is split and view references to link views which is I'm going to teach you that one as well okay so I'm just telling you how you are going to or how can you use the duplicate as a dependent in your project okay so in the dependent view you show only a specific area of the view and you can insert a match lines to indicate where the view is split and uh, what else the view references to link views so this option helps to create views that show portions of a plan when the entire plan is too large to fit on our drawing sheet okay so that's how it works so let me just right click this main view let's use the other option the third one duplicate as a dependent so let's click this one and there you go so there is our duplicate so this is our parent view this is our parent and then this is our dependent okay so there's the name so maybe I'll just delete one there enter or whatever name that you want from there 
Okay, so what are the differences of your detailing, duplicate, and dependent? Okay, so we obviously know what's the difference with the duplicate and duplicate with detailing. So if it is duplicate, it will not include any annotation or details. If it is duplicate with detailing, it will include the details. Okay, so basically it's just like that. Okay, so how about the dependent? All right, so this is how it goes. If I'm going to change my duplicate here, this one, I'm going to double click that and then on my uh, view control bar, I'm going to change the scale. So the scale here is 1 is to 32. It looks, uh, it looks funny. Okay. So I'm going to change that to 1 is to, uh, 1 is to 50, for example. I'm going to change that to 1 is to 50. Okay. So it's now changed to 1 is to 50. And then if I'm going to open the with detailing, so let me double click the detailing, you will notice that it is not affected by the change, okay, of my duplicate view here. Okay, so basically, if you're going to use duplicate or duplicate with detailing, any changes that you made on that particular view it will not affect each other, okay? It will only apply on the current view, okay? It will not up, uh, it will not apply to the other views such as uh, detailing and then our parent view here, okay? Any changes that you made on the view properties in your current view, it will not affect the other views. So like, for example, if I'm going to change the with detailing here, I'm going to change that to, let's say, the detail level. I'm going to change the detail level to course. Okay, so I'm going to select course. So what will happen is all the duct here, all the pipes, all the ducts, the representation will going to be just a single line. So remember that that is what will happen if you are going to change your detail level to course. That's how it works. Okay, if you change your view to course, your duct, your pipe, your cable tray, your conduit, okay, it will turn to a single line. Okay, if you change your detail level to course. Now, since uh, detail level has something to do with the view. If I'm going to check the duplicate here, you will notice that it's not affected. If I go to the parent view, it's not affected. Because like what I have said, any changes on the view properties on your current view, it will only apply to the current view. So it will not apply to the other views. Okay, so basically that's how it works. And remember, if your detail level is coarse, okay, your duct pipes, uh, cable trays, conduit, the representation of them will gonna be single line. Okay, so remember that, so that it will not uh, cause you any confusion, right? Hope that one is clear. Okay, do you understand, guys? All right. Okay, now. The next thing that I'm going to show you is what will happen if I'm going to change the view property of my parent view as well as the dependent. So this is my parent view. So I'm going to change this one. So let's say I want to change the scale, okay? Or let's say I'm going to change the visual style, this one. So I'm going to change the visual style. I'm going to change that to shaded view. So I select the shaded. So it's now shaded, right? There you go. So it's a uh, shaded view. So if I'm going to select the duplicate again, it's not affected. Detailing, it's not affected, right? So how about the dependent? So I select the dependent. All right. So as you can see, the dependent is affected. So this is how it goes. Any changes that you made on the level 2 HVAC plan when it comes to the view properties, it will affect the dependent and vice versa. 
Okay, so if I'm going to change the scale of my dependent, so let's say the scale that I want here is, uh, let's say 1 is to 100. So I select 1 is to 100, scale. All right, so that's the 1 is to 100 view. So if I go to the parent view, it's also affected. Okay, see, it's affected. So it's 1 is to 100 as well. But, your duplicate here it's not affected okay as well as your detailing here so it's not affected okay so later on as we move on I'm gonna show you some applications on uh, the best use of uh, duplicate as a dependent but for now you just need to absorb first these few things that I have taught you okay about the uh, detailing duplicate and dependent so those are the difference of these three of course any changes that you made on the 3d model itself the 3d model it will affect all the views okay because they are just under one model okay they only have one uh, beam model right but when it comes to view so each view has its own view properties okay but if it is uh, dependent, so your dependent view is dependent to the parent view and vice versa. Any changes that you made on the dependent view, it will also be applied to the parent view when it comes to the view properties. Okay? So hope that one is clear. All right. Okay. Thanks for that, Stan. Let's move on. Okay, so those are the three options. Now, what are the other options that we can use to uh, control or manage the view? All right. So in AutoCAD, you have layers, right? You have layers in AutoCAD. So it controls the visibility of your object, right? So here in Revit, uh, what you can do is, from the properties, if you go to the properties, Okay, remember, any changes that you made here on the view properties, it will only affect your current view. Okay, it will not affect the other view unless if it is a parent to dependent or dependent to parent. Okay, if you change the dependent, it will also change the parent view. If you change the parent view, it will also change the dependent view when it comes to the view properties. But if it is just duplicate or duplicate with detailing, they have their own uh, properties. Now, here on the properties uh, window here, there is this option that is called the visibility graphic overrides. Okay. This is very useful. Okay. All right. So you will be using most of the time the, the visibility graphic overrides. So the visibility graphic overrides, which is, um, where is my cursor? Which is this one. Okay. Okay, it controls the visibility of the objects by category in the view. Okay, so you can uh, specify the visibility settings by using the visibility graphic overrides uh, dialog box. Okay, so again, this has something to do with the view property. So any changes that you made on the visibility graphic overrides, it will only apply to your current view. Okay, your other view will it will not get affected unless again if it is a dependent to a parent view okay but if that view is just created using duplicate or duplicate as a dependent uh, they are not going to um, affect each other okay so any changes that you made on the visibility graphic override it will only affect your current view and here we are talking about the visibility of the category category not only the single element like this one, right? Like this one. If I select the air terminal, okay, so this is only an instance of an element. So the category that I'm talking about is this one. This is the name of the category. Okay, remember, every time you select an object, you check out in this portion, that is the category of that object. So like, for example, if I'm going to select this one, I click this. So what is the category of this? 
So regardless of the type, regardless of the size, the category of that is docked. Okay? So as you can see, I also have here a flexible dock, right? So if I click this one, what is the category of that? So the category of that is flexible dock. Okay? So if you want to hide, let's say, for example, all your docks, you want to hide it. So one option, you can use your visibility graphic operates. So the shortcut for this is VV, okay? Victor, Victor, okay? Or VG. VG, Victor uh, Gold, okay? VG, so that's the shortcut. Or you can just go to the view properties and then click the edit, click that one. And then you will be able to see the visibility graphic overrides. So you have several tabs here. So again, this only applies to this view, to your level 2 HVAC plan duplicate view. Okay, by default, the selected tab here is model categories. The model categories, those are the 3D views. Okay, the 3D elements. Okay, okay? so basically it's just like that. So, um, any changes that, or let's say you want to take, um, turn off the visibility of your top. Okay, so what I'm just going to do is, I'm just going to look for that on the uh, model categories. Look for the top. Take note that you can also filter it here. So there's the filters list. So you can click the drop down arrow. So if you want to show only mechanical, so you can uncheck the architecture, you can uncheck the structure, and then you can check the mechanical so that it will only show you the mechanical. If you want to see only the electrical, then just like that. Uncheck mechanical, check electrical. All right? Okay? So just don't be confused. Why is it, hey, why is it my wall is uh, missing? I can't find my wall here. Okay? Because... There are some beginners like that, so it's just natural. That's okay. All right. The reason you are not seeing your walls here, your doors, it's because of the filter. Okay. So just be aware that there is a filter here. Okay. Of course, if you want to see all, you can just uh, check all of this. Okay. So that all of the categories for the model will going to be shown here. Right. So you can see here all your walls, doors, structural elements. It will be shown here, right? Now, let's say I want to turn off the visibility of my dock, okay? So, I just look for letter D. You can pick any of the category here and then type D so that it will go to letter D, category, and then just look for the dock. So, I'm just going to uncheck this one and then I'm going to select here, okay. And... There you go. So the docks are now hidden. Okay? Not only one dock, but the category of dock is now hidden. Right? Now, if you want to show it back, so you just need to check it. Just go back again to visibility graphic overrides. And then you go to docks. And then just select OK. That's it. Very simple. Right? No problem. Thank you for that, Boris. How are you? Okay. Now, the next thing that uh, I'm going to show you is in the visibility graphic override, you can actually override here the color of your elements. Okay, so since we are already in dock, so let's try to modify this. So let's go to the visibility graphic overrides. Let's look for the dock. There's the dock. This one. Okay, so you can actually expand that so you can see the different options of your line for the dock, the center line, the drop, the rise. Okay, you can change that one. You can change or override the color of that. But we're not going to tackle that one. So we just go to the dock. And then as you can see, there's an option here, override. So you click that one, override. Click. Okay, so you can change the pattern here. So let's say, oh, I want the pattern of my dock to be what? Let's say demolish lines, just like that. And let's say I want to change the color. So I change that to, let's say, uh, 
yellow for my demolish. Okay, so I select yellow, okay. And then you can also change here the line weight, but I'm not going to change that one, okay. So I'll just select here, okay, just select okay, and let's see what will happen. And there you go. Okay, again, I can't see clearly if my color is light. So I'm gonna just I'm just going to change the background here. So go to file, go to options, and then go to graphics, and then go to background. Let's change to black. Oops, black. Okay. There you go. You see what happens to all my dock here? Okay. See. So I'm just showing you here that you can change the, you can override the settings of your category. In our case, our duct. Okay. Now, I'm not going to do that. So I'll just go back again to visibility graphic overrides. And then let's look for the duct. Let's change this one. Click that. And I'm just going to clear the overrides. And then OK. You can actually change here transparency, right? So this uh, transparency override here, this one is useful if you are in 3D view. I don't actually use transparency in my in my 2D view, but I use this most of the time in my 3D view so that I can see other elements behind an element. Like for example, my wall, if I want to see the elements behind it, the dock, the pipe, the sprinklers. So I'm just going to change the transparency of my wall. So you can do it from here. Okay? And you can also make it half tone. Okay? So half tone means it will somehow gray out your your category. It will gray out and it will highlight other elements if you select half tone. Okay? Right, so hope this one is clear. So that is your model categories. So it talks about the 3D views in your, uh, I mean 3D elements in your project. Okay, on model categories. All right, when you go to the annotation categories, so from the name itself, annotation. So here you can control the annotation. Your tags, uh, what else? Tags, your labels, your dimensions. You can override here let's say i do not want to see all the section then you can go to the annotation categories and then you can uncheck the section you can also turn off the visibility of your elevation okay so it's all here so anything that has something to do with the annotation okay like the section view elevation view your tags your tags okay you can turn it off or you can turn it on here and then you can also override here okay as you can see there are some override here and then you can also make it half tone okay so it's just like that so that's your annotation category so we are not going to spend so much time to that one of course you still have your own time to explore this if you have any questions you can just uh, comment on some on one of my videos and like I always do I always reply okay so that's for your annotation categories analytical model I don't bother this much okay this is more on the structural side although in the structural I also don't bother this one okay so I'll just go to the imported categories so here in the imported categories you can override your imported drawings like for example you have AutoCAD you want to use this AutoCAD to create your detailed views okay so instead of redoing it again in Revit so you can just import your AutoCAD in Revit and then you can reuse the drawing so in the imported categories you can control the visibility of the AutoCAD drawing so you can turn off the visibility of the layers you can override the line types you can change the colors you can change the line weights okay just like on the model categories just like that okay and then you also have here filter okay so on the filter 
from the word itself from here you can create filter okay filter so maybe I'm just going to I'm going to show it to you later on so we're going to create a basic uh, basic filter on our uh, model actually you still have here a couple of tabs that will appear only if you perform their function like for example okay if you have a link model so let's say you have an MEP project and then you link in your architectural model or your structural model there is a new tab that will gonna be appearing here on the visibility graphic overrides window and that tab is called Revit links wherein you can control the visibility of your Revit link model okay and then if you activated the work sets the work sharing in your project so another tab will going to appear on your visibility graphic overrides which is work sets but since we don't have any link we don't have any work sharing functionalities in this project so those tabs are not appearing okay so that's all so we have this uh, tabs here so hopefully this one is clear again your visibility graphic overrides it will only apply to the current view okay the other views it will not be affected okay all right so let me just select okay here so do you have any question do you have any questions class right all right so if you don't have any questions so let's move on now for the next one um, the next thing that we will be doing let's try to explore some of the options here on the view control bar because Again, it has something to do with controlling our uh, views or managing our views. Okay, so let's say, for example, all right, um, I only want to show this portion here. Okay, so let's say, for example, just imagine uh, you have a very big project. Okay, but you only want to work out on this portion here. Okay. You do not want to see this area you don't want this okay you want to concentrate in this area so if you want to do that what you can do is you can use one of the tool here or one of the tools here on our visibility or on our view control bar okay so here on our view control bar there is this tool that is called show crop region so when you say show crop region so from the words itself if you click this one it will show the crop region okay so right now it's turned off that's why when I hover my pointer it says show crop region so meaning to say if I click that icon it will show the crop region all right and take note if this is the first time you're going to activate or turn on your show crop region the other tool or the other button beside that one which is crop view will gonna be activated as well so as you can see right now this crop view button here is turned off so there is an X there so once I turn on the let me just charge the laptop so once I turn on I turn on the show crop region automatically this one will going to be activated as well it will activate the crop view so let's try this so I'm going to select show crop region let's click that one there you go so there's our crop region and then also notice that the crop region now says do not crop view because our crop view is now activated so a while ago this icon says crop view because it's not yet activated now since it's already activated it's now saying do not crop view because right now it will crop now the view 
Okay, so let's click the crop, the view region, and then you can see here notes that you can control to stretch it. So let's say you only want to concentrate in this area, so you can click that, click, and then stretch from there, adjust, and then it will not let you to concentrate on that area. So you can control it here, there you go. There you go. There you go. Right? Okay. And then if you do not want to see the crop view here, the crop region, so you can just uh, turn off. So you can select hide crop region. So just hide it, but do not turn off the uh, crop region, the crop view. So just turn off the visibility of the crop region. Just hide it so that it's still crop. Okay, because there are some instances you only want to place this view inside the sheet, right? So for you to be able to do that, you need to crop the view. Again, these tools that we have here, it only affect your current view. It will not affect the, the other view, okay? Don't worry about that, which is, uh, which is very useful, right? Okay. Right now, the other uh, options that we can do here, okay, so I'm just going to uh, turn on again the crop view. Okay, so I'm just going to click this, the crop region. All right, so if I'm going to hover my pointer here, as you can see, it only highlights the, the boundary, right? But you can actually go to the view properties here and then you can look for annotation crop take note that these tools here the crop region and then the do not crop view you can also control this from the properties which is actually this two here the crop view this is also that icon okay so as you can see it's activated so the crop region visible this is also this tool here so you can control these two button here also to your properties. Do not select any object, okay? So this one here, the crop view is this one. Do not crop view. So crop vis uh, region visible, this is that one. So you can control it here as well on the properties. And then you also have here annotation crop. Okay, so from the word itself, it will crop. The annotation let's say for example I'm going to put here a dimension dimension is this one I'm just going to pick the dimension a line dimension I click that one and then let's say I want to put a dimension from here and then I'm going to put here and then I'm gonna place it here right just like that so there's my dimension so if I'm going to turn on the annotation crop before that, let me just put again some annotation here. Like, I'm going to use the text tool. So, I'm going to click this. I click that one. And then, let's say I'm going to place a text here. All right. So, this is my annotation. Okay. That's my annotation. Just click outside. Select modify to terminate the tool. Okay. So I have couple of annotation here. So I have a dimension. I have a text here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select annotation crop. Okay. I'm going to activate that. So what will happen? I'm going to click that. And as you can see now, my dimension here disappears. Why is that? If I'm going to hover my pointer on the crop region, so as you can see, there is now a dotted line outside the solid line, right? See, so this is our solid line and then here is our dotted line. So this solid line here, this is our crop region. It crops the 3D elements, right? Now that dotted lines or that dash line, if I'm going to click the crop region, that is actually your crop annotation your annotation crop okay so now it's activated so what happens is any 2d elements or any annotation that touches this 
dash line, it will gonna be cropped out of the view. So it will be hidden. Okay, it will not be deleted, it's just hidden or cropped out. So if I'm going to click this to adjust the annotation crop, I'm going to pick here. Drag and pick. As you can see, there's our dimension. The reason why it disappears because it's outside the annotation crop. Okay? So if it is outside or touching the annotation crop, it will going to be hidden in your view. It will be cropped. There you go. So just like this one, if I'm going to click that, drag that outside, so as you can see, it will disappear. Okay, so that's why there are some instances, some uh, beginners in Revit, they are wondering, hey, why is it every time I create text, it disappears? Or every time I place a tag, or every time I place dimension, it disappears. Well, this is your culprit. So it's because the annotation crop is enabled. So that's why if I'm going to create a text, let's say somewhere here, I create a text there. So my name is Richard, and then I just click outside. Click outside. So you will see this warning. Okay, so this warning you can see, let me show you the warning if you can see it on my screen. So there's the warning. So, so you can see this one. None of the created elements are visible in our current view. Okay, so you may want to check the active view, parameters, visibility settings, as well as any plan regions and their settings. Okay, so these are the options that you need to check out. But we all know already what is the problem. The problem why we can't see our annotation it's because of this one annotation crop because there are some instances we do not want to see all the text outside because if your model here it contains uh annotations dimensions if you activate the crop view it will only activate uh, it will only crop the 3d elements so if you want to make it clean, so you may want to activate also the annotation crop so that your annotations around your model is not clattering or littering around your model here. So it will be crop as well. So if you want to show it, then you just uncheck annotation crop. There you go. So there's now our annotation. Okay. Because we disable the uh, annotation crop. Okay. So hope this one is clear. From Boris Jokaboris. Question. Hi Rich, a question please. What if you have a topography and building and you want only to crop the building? Is there any option for that, sir, please? So no, um if you are going to crop only the building you can't do it separately from the topography okay the annotation uh, the the crop region it will it will crop all the 3d elements that includes your topography okay so you can't do it separately unless you just hide the topography and then you just crop the building okay but if you are going to crop the 3d model separate from the topography uh, you can't do that okay you can't do that all right so hope that one is clear Boris all right next let's move on okay now let me just select this and delete I don't need this select delete so let us explore more some of the options to manage our view okay so what else so here on the what is this called so this is our view control bar so what else okay you see this one see this bulb here it says reveal hidden elements reveal hidden elements so this is very useful if you want to see all the elements that is hidden currently in the view so like for example this is our view if you want to see all the elements that is hidden in this view so you can just turn on that bulb here okay so just click that bulb click that and then as you can see there are some elements now here that is highlighted 
right? So this is the color of our reveal hidden elements. Okay, maybe in your case it's colored, uh, colored red. Okay, but uh, nevertheless, okay, All right. Uh, I'm just going to plug the charger. Okay, but nevertheless, so as you can see, that color highlights. Okay, so meaning these are the elements that is hidden in your current view. Okay, so these lighting fixtures or uh, electrical fixtures are hidden in this view because this is a mechanical view. That's why the electrical elements are hidden in this view. Okay. But anyway, if you want to turn on the visibility of the elements that is hidden in your current view, so what you can do is you just uh, need to click that one. Let's say, for example, this. You click that. As you can see here, the option is unhide category. It's not unhide element. Why? Because in this view, these elements here, these um, electrical fixtures, they are hidden using the... Uh, visibility graphic overrides they are hidden by category that's why if I'm gonna click this one and then I select unhide category right so you will notice all of the electrical fixtures is now half tone so meaning to say if I'm going to turn off the reveal hidden elements it will now show here right okay so I'm just going to hide it using the visibility graphic overrides. And then let's look for electrical fixtures. Just going to select that and then I'm going to uncheck. And then OK. And it's now hidden. Okay, so you can also use your uh, reveal hidden elements to see the elements that is hidden in your current view and make it visible again. All right, so let me show you another way of <clears throat> uh, managing your the visibility of the view. So let's say this air terminal. I want to hide this air terminal only, not the category. Okay, I only want to hide this air terminal, this instance. Okay, not the category. Because if it is category, it doesn't matter whether is that air terminal is uh, return diffuser or supply diffuser as long as they are on the same category all of these air terminals will gonna be hidden if you're going to use the visibility graphic overrides here if you're going to uncheck that regardless of the type of the air terminal it will gonna be hidden right but let's say for example what I want is I want to be specific okay so I only want to hide this element so I'm going to select this and then right click and then there is an option here that is called where are you hide in view okay so you have actually three options here elements category by filter we're not going to focus on by filter Okay, we just want elements and categories. So we know already what is category. So if you select there, hide in view category, the category will be hidden, not only the selected elements. Okay, which is you can also do this in the visibility graphic overrides. But if you're going to use the other option, which is elements, it will only hide the selected element or elements. Okay, in our case, we only have selected one. So I'm going to select here elements. And there you go. So it's now hidden. Okay. Now, if you're going back to your visibility graphic overrides here, as you can see, air terminals here is still checked. Okay. Because what we did is just, we just hide an instance, not the category. So if you want to return it back, uh, you turn on the visibility again of that particular air terminal. Again, this is very useful the reveal hidden elements you click that one and then again it will show you the elements that is hidden it's the same color as the name here i mean that shaded uh, part of the reveal hidden elements okay so you just need to select that one and then i want you to notice this this time it's now saying unhide element 
Okay, so it's not category because we hide this by element, right? So I'm just going to select unhide element and then just turn off the reveal hidden elements again. Just select X and there you go. Okay? Alright, is that clear? Okay, hope this one is clear. Oh, thanks for that, Boris. Okay, so let's move on. So I'm just going to minimize this one again. All right. Now, um, next thing that we're going to do is, um, you know already, what is this one, this bulb here? Now, how about this? Revi uh, temporary. So this is temporary. Temporary hide uh, element. Okay, so how about what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to open the 3D view. Alright, so let me open the 3D view here. So let me click that icon, default 3D view. Or, of course, you can also go to your project browser and then just double click the 3D. Okay? Right? Or just select that icon. Just click that one. So this is now our 3D view. Now, what I want here is, um, let's say I want to see temporarily the, uh, what's this? Okay, this electrical fixture. Okay, I only want to see the electrical fixtures. So let's say, for example, I want to know the number or the to or the total count of the electrical fixtures. Although I can just simply create a schedule for that, which is easier as well. Okay, but let me try this uh, way. So instead of creating a schedule, which we have a separate topic for that. So I want to separate all the electrical fixtures regardless of the type and I want to know the total number of that electrical fixtures. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this option here. On the view control bar, it says temporary hide isolate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click one of the electrical fixture, this duplex receptacle. So I'm going to click that one and then I'm going to click this um, glass here. So let's click that glass. And then there's an option here. So by this time, you should know already what is the difference between the category and then element. Okay, so you know, you know, hopefully you know already what is the difference. So if it is element, we are talking about on the instance, on the, the one that you selected. Okay, so this is an element. Okay, so let's say I'll just click one of the element and then I just click this one. Now you have an option here if you want to hide the category okay so or isolate the category it will isolate all the electrical fixtures the category okay so there is an option here as well hide category if you want to hide all the electrical fixtures temporarily and then you also have here isolate element and hide element now for this one since i want to see all the electrical fixtures so i'm just going to isolate the category because if it is a uh, isolate element it will only isolate this selected element we don't want that what we want is category so isolate category you click that one and let's zoom out there you go so it's now isolated, right? Okay. So it's now isolated. All the electrical fixtures. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom out like this. And then I'm going to use crossing selection like that. Okay. So after I select, you check out the properties. And there you go. So there's the total number of your electrical fixtures. Right? Very useful. Okay. Now, if you want to go back to your uh, original view, just click again that button, the temporary hide isolate, and then reset hide isolate. Temporary. Okay, click, and there you go. So let's say, for example, um, I want to know the number of my, my air terminal, the category. So I'm just going to click that, select that glass, and then um, isolate category. Just click that one. And there you go. It contains the supply diffuser, return diffuser, and exhaust diffuser or terminals. 
Okay, you can select all of this and then you can now see there the total number of your air terminals regardless of the type. Okay, so I now have here 202. Okay, very useful, right? So let's click this, reset. Okay. Okay, of course you already know what is here, uh, hide, right? So if there is an isolate, there's also hide. So let's say I do not want to see all the dock here. Okay, I don't want to see all the dock. So select the dock, one dock. Let's click that glass, temporary, and then uh, how about hide category? Okay, hide category. Select. There you go. So there's no dock here. Of course, there's a flex dock, so it's a different category from dock. Right. Cool. Okay, I know for some this is kind of boring, but if you are just beginners, you should be able to familiarize yourself to this one. Okay. Right. Anyway, so let's move on. Time is not getting any younger. Okay, so let me just reset again this one. Reset. There you go. Okay, so here in the 3D view, okay, in our floor plan, let's say here on our floor plan, you can crop this, right? You can crop using this tool here, okay? The crop view and then the crop visible, uh, crop region visible. You can control the cropping of that for your 3D elements. But how about if it is in 3D, okay? If it is in 3D, how are you going to crop this? Although you can still activate your crop view here, your crop region visibility and then the annotation crop. I do not use that in the 3D view, okay? Uh, yeah, I, I haven't used that one in 3D view. I only use the crop view, the crop region visibility and then the annotation crop in 2D view, okay? So here, if it is 3D view, and then you want to crop your 3D, like for example, uh, let me just orbit. By the way, if you want to orbit, you just need to hold the shift, and then just hold the middle button of your mouse, and then you can just move your mouse to orbit. Okay, you can zoom in, and then you can orbit as well. Now, you can also select the element to make it the pivot or the pivot of your orbit so just click that and then you can orbit okay so that the concentration of orbiting is on that selected element okay that's an ideal way of orbiting your model so you click first uh, pivot or pivot or however you pronounce that one just click first and then that will serve as your point there for example that one and then you can now orbit so it's now concentrated on that particular element. Now, let's say, for example, you want to crop this portion here. Okay, this portion here. You want to crop that. So how are you going to do that? You want to crop that in 3D. Okay, so one option. I'm going to show you many options. The first option, you check out the properties here. Check out the section box. Okay, you just um, activate the section box. Click that. Okay, so there's the check, then just zoom out. Now, what happens is, okay, again, this is a common uh, common problem in the beginners in Revit. So, their complaint is, hey, Rich, why is it my section box is not showing in my current view? Although, I already checked my section box. Okay, so how are you going to give solution to this? Solution number one, check out the visibility graphic overrides. So select the edit. And then it's not here on the model categories. Check out the annotation categories. You go there and then you click one category and then you just type S to go to section box. And then you will see here, there you go. Your section box is unchecked on your visibility graphic override so that is what you're going to do so you just need to check it and then okay and voila okay so there's now your section box so now if i'm going to uncheck the section box here 
and then just click outside it's now hidden now if I'm going to check it again there you go okay and did you know that you can also select the section box here instead of going to your uh, visibility graphic override so just in case you want to hide your section box you just want to hide it so instead of unchecking the section box you can click the section box right click hide in view elements so you can do that as well okay again if you want to show that you check your visibility graphic overrides annotation categories you look for section box so you can see now here why is it the section box here is check and yet it's still not showing it's still not showing right because the way you hide your section box is different you didn't hide it using the visibility graphic overrides you hide it using right click hide element right now for you to be able to show back again your section box okay second option or second solution that you can do is you use the bulb here okay so that you have many solutions just in case you encounter this missing section box okay you can use your bulb here you click the bulb we know the function of that it will show you hidden elements right which is one of them is our section box you click the section box and then there you go just unhide it okay click that one unhide and then close it off there you go so there's my section box okay so let's say you want to concentrate this area so I can go to the top of my view cube I click that one then I can crop it now you crop it you crop it there you go there you go okay there you go of course you can still uh, crop it up like that okay you can do that you can do that there you go nice okay hope this one is clear again if you have any question you can put it on our uh, uh, live chat right so that's how you do it now um, the next thing that I'm gonna show you is that for your uh, section box if you just want to hide the section box so what you can do is you can use the visibility graphic overrides to hide the section box or you can select the section box right click and then hide it hide element do not use this one okay so do not uncheck the section box yes the section box will be hidden but if you are going to uncheck this one it will show back again the whole model so you oh, so you're going to crop again your 3d model so just in case you accidentally click that one okay if you're going to uncheck this it will gonna disable your your section box and hide it okay whereas if you're going to use visibility graphic overrides or click right click and hide it hide element it will only hide your section box but it will not disable your section box okay because if you uncheck that check this one out uncheck okay so it will now be hidden but it will disable it it will show you again the whole model so you need to crop it again but don't worry there is another option here if you want to uh, uh, section or crop this area only how to do that very simple I think this feature starts in 2018 so please correct me if I'm wrong this is one of the best feature that have come in Revit so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to select this area here okay select that area and then look for section box or you type BX you click that one and there you go see very fast right automatically it will set your uh, section box not only in the 3d view but you can also apply your uh, section box 
in your or your selection box in your 2D view. So let's so, uh, let's say I go to the 2D view floor plan. So let's say this area here. Okay, so this area. So I just window like that. And then just click that one. Selection box. Select. There you go. Right? Very nice feature. Oops. So just in case your model lost like that, just press the middle button twice quickly so it's zoom extends okay press the middle button twice double click your middle button so you see right so that's the power of selection box okay so hope this one is clear so managing our view we ha we have several uh, topics to discuss here okay it's a uh, quite there we have quite a few topics for our managing views one okay so that's how you use your uh, uh, selection box so that's very useful another way of uh, cropping your view your 3d view so let's say for example I'm going to open again the uh, let's say I'm going to duplicate the 3d here Okay, let's duplicate this. Right click and I'll just use duplicate. Okay, so I'll just use duplicate and then I'm going to call this, uh, let's say I call this 3D underscore, uh, let's say level 1. Okay, 3D level 1. So this is my 3D level 1. Okay, so what I want is I want to show in this 3D the level 1 of my model. Regardless of the discipline, so I just want to show the level 1, okay? Or let's say level 2, or whatever level is that, okay? So what I'm going to do is, okay, in the 3D view, you have your section, uh, your view cube here. So you can right-click any part of the view cube, right-click, and then look for orient to view orient the view and then you go to floor plans there you go and then you look for the floor plan that you have so currently I don't have level 1 created in my view it only shows me the level that is currently available from the project browser so maybe I'm just going to change this to level 2 okay because there is no level 1 there I'm going to show that to you later on don't worry about that we have topic for that so let's say I want to show the level 2 floor plan here, the 3D of the level 2 floor plan. So I'm going to right click any part of the view cube. So right click and then after that, let's look for orient to view floor plan. And then you just select any of the level 2 here. Doesn't matter what whatever discipline is that. As long as it is level 2. So let's say I use level 2 HVAC plan. So you click that one. And then again, Revit will now automatically set your view. See? It's now showing only the second level. How good is that? Right? Now, let's say, for example, uh, Rich, I want to show also or I want to highlight the architectural model. Aside from highlighting the uh, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire protection, your MEPF, I also want to highlight the architectural and then the structural, for example. So to do that, what you can do is you go to the properties and then you change the discipline. So currently the discipline here is mechanical. So what you can do is you can click that one. You click the drop down here. And then you change the discipline. So make it coordination. Click that. And just click outside. Voila. There you go. So it's now showing you your architectural as well as your discipline. Your services. Okay. Of course, you can still use this one. You can use that to crop your view. Okay. Is this okay? You understand? It's not difficult, right? Alright, so Rich, can you 
Can you please recommend me a channel where I can robot strong? Mm, I actually have no idea on the robot structural analysis YouTube channel. So maybe you can just search it. I just really don't have any idea what is a channel that is good for robot structural analysis. Okay, Boris. Sorry about that. Okay, that's it for that one. Okay, so that's how you uh, change the discipline, which is very useful, right? Okay. Now, um, another way of uh, editing or managing your view is by changing here the uh, detail level. I already shown this to you before. If I make it a uh, course, so what will happen is all your doc. All your pipe it will show only lines so as you can see here it, it disappears right okay it disappears okay so let me change the uh, discipline to mechanical there you go so as you can see the representation of my dock my pipes okay the representation becomes line so that is how the course detail level uh, detail level works so it make your docs pipes uh, conduit cable tray okay single line okay so if it is uh, medium so let me show you these three options it if it is medium medium detail level so what happens is your dock will not gonna be affected but your pipe is affected your pipe you can do it your cable tray is affected if you are going to change the detail level to medium but your dock it's not affected okay so if you're going to use the fine detail level it will affect nothing okay it will not affect the uh, 3d model as you can see it shows now 3d your pipe and they are dock and then the rest of the elements but if you want to show only the detail level of your elements into a line so you just change that to course again sometimes this cause confusion to just uh, to starters of Revit so they are wondering why is it some of my elements are showing single line why is it some is not okay it's because of your uh, detail level okay and then also we have here unlock 3d view Okay, so this one again, it's on the view control bar. What is this one? So unlock 3D view. So there are some instances wherein you want to create a 3D view, and then uh, uh, sometimes you want to show a certain part of the 3D view during the coordination meeting. You do not want that to be modified or to be touched by anyone. So what you do is you create the 3D view and then you lock it. Okay, so let's say, for example, for this one, so let's say I'm just going to randomly crop crop this one. So let's say uh, I want to show this during the meeting, this 3D here. Okay, so this one, in this, in this manner, okay? I do not want others to change this, okay? I do not want them to be uh, to orbit this one like this or to, or to change the orientation of the view. I want this to be like this only. So what you can do is you can lock the view. Okay, you can click that. You click that. As you can see, there is a save orientation and lock view. Okay, you just select that one. After you set up your 3D view, you click that save. Okay. And then as you can see, I cannot orbit anymore. See? I'm trying to orbit. Okay? So I'm trying to change the view cube. I cannot drag the view cube. So it's already locked. Right? So this all this is also useful if you want to put some details in your um, 3D view. You can actually place a text here. So there's a text. So you can put a text. Alright? So you can put that. So let's say like that. Then you can... You can just put change just like that okay so you can do that in in detailing okay so of course you can change that that size 
so I don't have any size but anyway so you you get the idea so your 3d view now here is locked okay so you can't orbit this accidentally for coordination but just in case you want to uh, move that again so you can now just click that button again so you click that and lock the view okay so you can now orbit again see okay so that's how it works all right okay so I think um, we are going to continue our discussion next uh, next meeting so probably we're going to do it again on Friday so Friday same time all right so Friday same time we are going to continue our discussion about managing the views okay so hopefully we'll be able to discuss there the filters and then the view template and other uh, commands or tools that will allow us to manage our view okay so do you have any questions regarding the topic? Right? So hopefully you're able to download the exercise files because later on I'm going to delete that. Okay? I'm going to delete that exercise files. So like what I've said, you can only you can only get the exercise file if you attend. So here's the link. So you can download it from here. Okay, so after 30 minutes or so, I'm going to delete the files inside this folder. Okay, so do you have any questions? So hopefully you learned something from this one. Okay, so hopefully you learned something from uh, this part one of managing our views. So just a recap, we have learned how to use our uh, view control bar, uh, duplication, the properties, okay? And then the visibility graphic overrides, which is pretty useful in managing your views. Okay, and last question, do B managers need to know all the field of Revit, like Revit Arts? No. Okay? No. So if your company is Revit MEP, so your B manager should should definitely know the the B managerial site for the MEP. It's only a plus if he also knows the architectural or structural okay but e even if he don't or she don't know the structural or architectural doesn't matter that's okay as long as of course he needs to know the MEP same with architectural for the beam architectural uh, manager it doesn't need to follow that you need to know the structural or MEP no <laughs> oh, it's not like that it's just a plus Okay, so if you know structural or an MEP, even though you are an architectural manager, well, it's a plus. That's good. Okay, but it doesn't necessarily mean follow that you need to know all the discipline. Okay, yep, that's it. Okay, so that's it. So again, if you have any comments or questions, you can just put it here on our uh, chat. Okay, but for now, thank you for watching guys. Have a nice day.